would we not? Um, we can do. There's no reason not to live stream it. I think it's open to the press and public. Yeah, I don't it's think there's any here. reason we could argue to, to not live stream. Apart from the fact that we haven't told the candidates that we're doing it. Um, I think two do know. It would be a nice surprise for the third. <laughs> Assuming you vote in favour. Assuming, yeah, exactly. OK, welcome everybody. <laughs> welcome everybody to this, this first meeting, which is to discuss the freedom of the town of Haber Hill to, um, to potentially uh, uh, some members of our town. Um, so first of all, I'll start off about the recordings in meetings. Um, also, if you sorry, I need to speak up as well. You okay? <laughs> so uh, I was just going to say about um, if it, people can speak up when they when they talk, so that um, those that with hearing difficulties can hear, please, and do let me know if I'm too quiet. <laughs> okay, so please note that this meeting is being recorded by the town council. Please note that the recording device is sensitive and the recording cannot be edited. So do not say anything you do not want to record it. If necessary, I will direct all recording in the room to be stopped, but generally I want to avoid doing that. So we will normally record everything except any item taken in closed session. Members of the public may also make their own recordings, but must follow our rules for doing so, including stopping recording when requested. Whilst we do not accept anonymous speaking at the public forum, members of the public who wish to speak but do not, do not want their name published must please indicate this before saying your piece. Thank you. So, first item on the agenda, apologies for absence. Uh, we have apologies from Councillor Brown, Councillor Crooks, Councillor Davidson, Councillor Furman, Councillor Fox, Councillor Miller-Jones and Councillor Stinchcombe. Thank you. So, item two on the agenda, declaration of interest and request for dispensations. Are there any? None received. None received. So the main item on this agenda is the admittance to the freedom of the town of Haverhill. So under the Local Government Act 1972, S249 bracket 5, to consider the admitting of Maureen Byrne, past town mayor, ex-town councillor and borough councillor, to be honorary freeman of the town of Haverhill, in recognition of her, her eminent service to our town, town, representing townspeople both in local government and in her role as a union representative and her work for the local women's refuge. So we'll deal with that one first, under A. May I have somebody speaking, Jane? Can I speak? Yes, please? thank you. I would like to propose Maureen Byrne that is given the freedom of Haverhill for the significant contribution that she has made to the life of many residents since moving here. Maureen moved to Haverhill as part of the London Overspill relocation arrangement she quickly established as the go-between person and supported many families who settled here. Maureen is also an expert in employment law and has given free support, guidance and help to make many residents who have been in challenging employment situations, restoring their self-esteem and often requiring financial compensation for them to re-establish. In more recent years, Maureen has become chairman of the Women's Aid Organisation where she works tirelessly for those who have suffered from domestic abuse. Maureen was also a dedicated and hard-working councillor and maintains a healthy interest in all aspects of our town. And it is my great pleasure to put this proposal to the Town Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. And may I have a seconder on that? Councillor Marks? I'm very happy to second that proposal. Yep, thank you. Did anyone else want to speak before we take the vote? Or you, David? Yeah, I'd just like to say, yeah, as uh, one of the councillors that um, had the honour of uh, following Maureen in a, as a role, in a role as a town councillor, he will say, I it's uh, eminently aware that they're very big shoes to fill and uh, constantly reminder, reminded of the work that she's done for the town in the past. So I'm very happy to support this proposal. Okay, thank you. Right, shall we go for the votes in favour, please? That's unanimous. Thank you. So we will organise that event, yes. Um, okay, so B, under Local Government Act 1972, S249, bracket 5, to consider the admitting of Mr Brian Thompson and Mrs Charmian Thompson to be honorary freemen of the town of Haverhill 
in recognition of their eminent service to our town through their volunteer, volunteering for the Haverhill Family History Group and supporting the work of Haverhill Town Council and others in making up important events both local and national. Thank you. Is there anyone who wants to speak on, on that? Councillor Burns. Uh, colleagues, um, Brian and Charmian Thompson have been stalwarts of Haver Hill for quite some time now. They are Chair and Secretary of the Haver Branch of the Suffolk Family History Society, respectively, and arranged numerous meeting, research and training sessions, and many other events, both online and in person. They are members of the Friends of St Mary's, involving themselves with all their events to maintain the Grade 1 listed structure. They research and create very detailed historical and topical exhibitions on a great number of subjects ranging from individual facts of military veterans to histories of a particular industry or company, interviewing many people to store their memories for years to come, and numerous other tasks related to both the cultural and historical heritage of our town. They involve themselves with the education of our young, ranging from invigilating exams here at Summy Ward to creating projects for the young to which in turn form part of larger projects. They are an integral part of many of our civic events, including Remembrance and Armed Forces Week. But particularly the notice of support given to the Count Council and, and me for the BE and BJ Day commemorations last year in 2020, when we were all in lockdown, and in years gone past when they organised many of the activities. They volunteer in all weathers to act as stewards at events. Their cheerful presence and willingness to do any task asked of them is an inspiration. All of this they do with absolutely no fuss, and often very little thanks, for the benefit of our town and to keep memories alive for future generations. They are the number one couple to go to if anything is needed to do with its residents, past and present, the history and the heritage of this town. I therefore wholeheartedly recommend and propose that Brian and Charmian Thompson are individually awarded the civic honour of the freedom of Haverhill. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burns. Is there anybody else who wants to speak on that, Councillor Roach? Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, they're worthy recipients of this. You, you find Brian and Charmian at the core of almost everything that goes on in Haverhill. Um, I'm, I'm happy to second it. Um, they're part of that small core of people in the town that are always there and giving their time to absolutely worthy of this. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Councillor Roach. Councillor Hanlon? Yeah, can I add as well that, that they're also um, doing lots of things for St Mary's. Um, they do tours of the tower and collect quite a lot of money for St Mary's, um, which is well needed as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else to speak? Councillor Mason? I'd just like to add in that uh, volunteering is a much valued uh, resource in the town and it makes the fabric of our community stronger. Um, the, the length of service that these two people have kindly given to Haver Hill uh, is an example for everyone to follow. And I, th I think the council giving recognition for their service is a reminder of how much we value volunteering. So not only are we thanking uh, these two people, we're also sending a clear message about how we value all volunteers. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Okay, ready for a seconder? Have I had a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor, I'm oh, sorry, did you say a second? Say Councillor Roach, sorry. You can pick somebody else if you like, it's fine. No, that's fine, sorry, I do apologise. Okay, so um, all in favour then, please? Yeah, that's unanimous, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So we'll have an arrangement for that then. Yeah, thank you. So now we'll be closing that meeting um, at 1908, so 7.08. And we go on to our next meeting. Okay, so I won't re read the recording the meetings thing again. I don't think there's need, but... Um, so we'll start off with the main full council meeting. So item one on the agenda, apologies for absence. Uh, as as per the previous meeting. Okay, thank you. Any declaration of interest and request for dispensations? No? Nope. None received. Okay, thank you. Okay, so item three, um, Samuel Ward Academy. So Mr Andrew Hunter will outline plans for the school sixth form and growth. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for inviting me to come and talk to you this evening. Um, I don't know how much detail you want me to go into. I mean, we, we largely had this conversation before the start of the meeting. Uh, I understand that as this is live streamed, there might be other people watching. Would you? Would someone guide me on that? Yeah, just have a summary, I suppose. Yeah, just the main points that you feel mm -hmm. would be good for people to understand. Okay. Um, Sixth form education in Haverhill has had a chequered recent past. Not very many years ago, uh, we were worried that the sixth form might close at some award. Um, Haverhill Community Sixth Form, as we rebranded it, has grown from that point and has this year taken in uh, more students into year 12 and kept in more students into year 13 than it had at any point in the last six or seven years. So it's a sixth form which is back on its feet and ready to expand. Uh, we want to expand in a way that serves our students well and serves the local employment environment well. We've got no interest in being in competition with other post-16 providers. We just want to do the right thing for our community. We want to provide something which is not just good enough for Haverhill, but which is so good that it becomes a draw into Haverhill. Uh, so that people living in the town will have that as their first choice if it's the right thing for them. We think we can offer uh, a good range of courses mixed with all the benefits of a small sixth form centre and the, the pastoral care and the strong relationships that come with that. We want to work closely with local firms and businesses to make sure that the syllabus we create for that post-16 centre is moving towards closing the education skills gap in Haverhill so that we can grow the next generation of the Haverhill workforce in Haverhill itself and avoid the, to me, deathly act of requiring our best and brightest to leave Haverhill in order to further their education. Um, I'm happy to take any questions on that if anyone would like further, further detail. Any questions, anybody? No? Okay, thank you, um, Andrew. The, thank you. Um, we're going to move on to, if that's okay with you, we're going to move on to the item nine, if that's okay with everybody, um, on the one Haverhill par partnership, so that um, Mr. Hunter can talk about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know what item 9 is. Right. Sorry, one Hill partnership. So it's your, new, it's your, your role as, new, as the chair, new yeah. chair. Okay. So it's really a chance for councillors to ask you questions yeah. on how you see your role as chair taking over from John. Would you like me to give, give a brief overview first? Or just yep. go straight to questions? So I, I will give it a review. It was, uh, I was, I was uh, honoured and surprised be asked if I have any interest in uh, taking up the chair of the one Hayden partnership. Um, I think I agreed to it before I really understood completely properly what it was. Uh, it's been an absolute joy to me to, to understand the level of partnership working in Hayden uh, and to start to meet some of the range of people who have an interest in making Haver Hill a stronger community. I've worked in a lot of schools where the school is the single biggest employer in the town, uh, around Cambridgeshire specifically. Not quite the case in Haverhill because there are two schools in Haverhill, but nonetheless, I, I very quickly noticed here that there is more civic determination uh, in Haverhill than in any small town I've worked in in the last 15 years. There's more interest from more people in working together to, to further the town than there is in any town. I've worked in the last 15 years, and I think it's incredible. Um, but I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to be a part of it. Um, and happy to take your questions. Okay, any questions, anybody? Councillor Marks? Um, things work better if you have a project and a name. And, uh, you know, One Haverhill has a, a lot of people around that table. So, do you have a, a name or a specific project? that you think we should focus on, the, the, the one paper of partnership should focus on, because, you know, then, then that's something grounded and achievable, isn't it? Do you, do you feel that there's something specific that can be...? I, I entirely agree with you that a project and name are important things. I, I don't feel it's my place to, to bring that. Um, I, I don't think it's... You know, I don't see the one Haverhill partnership as a, a personal vehicle for me to 
further my ideas. I mean, if you know, if I if I want to create and come up with new ideas, I've, I've got Sandra Ward Academy and Haverhill Community Six Hall to work with. I, 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 this is where I have my creative moments. And as uh, chair, do you not think you might drive it in that direction? Because you know, a, uh, you've got enough. I can't remember how many members there are, but a lot. Yes. And it, you know, if you're defocused, then you don't achieve a great deal. So I think it's really important that there is an aim and a, an objective and an outcome. Well, that's why we're using the opportunity of the tenth anniversary to look again at the business plan. Okay. Um, I think the business plan, uh, which was certainly a good business plan at when it was written, uh, will have been knocked off course by the last 18 months of COVID, uh, and there will be things that, which have been overtaken by circumstance, and other bits which have lost their relevance due to time. So for me, the, what I can bring to that is, is encouraging the refreshing of the business plan and the engagement across the whole community with people who want to have some feedback into what they want from their community uh, and then to drive that forward. So in a sense, I, I see my role as chair as being a mirror to the community and a way of focusing the, 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 the needs of the community and, and local business and local government and local enterprise and local people. So do you, do you see a way of sharing that with perhaps your pupils at school so that they can then inform their parents because I think we have a bit of a challenge with people understanding what one annual does and perhaps you have a great opportunity to share that information and impart it so that it gets back into families and communities this way. Well, we've been very lucky at um, to welcome in the past such local owners as, uh, as Councillor Burns and, and Colin who've come and talked to, to our kids about local democracy. Now, that's, that's great because it's one thing having a lesson on what local democracy is and how it functions. And it's an entirely different thing, having people talking to each other and saying, this is what actually happens. This is where, this is the problem to start with, this is the process, this is the resolution. So I'm, I'm very keen that we, uh, that, that we use it as a way of drawing the children further into their sense of community. Um, but also, I, you know, I, I'm learning a lot about One Haver Hill rapidly through being involved in it. And I, I wouldn't want at this stage to say what I think that will look like for this school a year from now, because I think probably if I did that, I'd be limiting the imagination of both myself and the group. Uh, I, I'd rather wait uh, until it, it starts to develop on itself. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Mason. Uh, I just wondered what you feel were maybe the main successes that one have have achieved so far? Um, well, I think being the I think the longest uh, partnership of its kind in the country has got to be a, a pretty big success, hasn't it? And I understand there were a number of other partnerships similar to One Haver Hill set up at the same time, and One Haver Hill has stood the test of time. And you only have to look at the people who are involved in it to know that it's, it's a success in all of itself. Um, I think that community prescribing is a fantastic thing, an absolutely fantastic thing that's done, I'm sure. Uh, an absolute ton of good for the people who play well. Um, and if that isn't, you know, if that isn't rolled out across the whole country, it's a wasted opportunity because it's such a positive thing. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. This is a fair question, really, but do you, <laughs> um, <laughs> along with Haverhill, one partnership, uh, one Haverhill partnership, there's various other bodies in the town now mm. that do um, uh, bring in business involvement, whatever, in one way or another. Do you feel we might be beginning to be overrun by these bodies, or do you think more the merrier? Well, I think I think for a town to be overrun by organisations working for the betterment of the town is a good circumstance to be in. Yeah, it's a good place, and and the more I find out about the people working in the town, the more impressed I am. Uh, you know, when I go and meet uh, the people who work at the epicentre, I'm completely taken aback by their desire to work in that space between public and private sectors. Uh, and when I meet the people who work at Mentor, I'm completely taken aback by their desire to work in that same space between public and private sectors. And I think that that, that that liminal space between those two sectors is where much of the best work over the next 20 years is going to take place in communities like ours. So the more organisations want to come together and work together, the more people want to talk to each other about what the opportunities are the more potential there is for, for big impact. You know, what, what is 
puts death to any organisation is where ideas develop in silos and people guard jealously their own ideas and don't want to collaborate and don't want to cooperate because it means that those individual projects never really blossom in the way that projects do when you have new and unexpected inputs that might take you in a different direction and open your eyes to possibilities you have no idea about. I think that's probably yeah, what I'm um, alluding to. The fact there's inevitably going to be uh, duplication in, um, along the way somewhere. Um, do you think there is enough uh, collaboration between the different uh, bodies? I'm that, certainly no? finding I'm collaborating a lot. I'm talking to a lot of different people a lot of the time. You know, I mean, uh, uh, John Mayhew, very gave me a very, a very kind and careful handover, in which he explained that he was just chairing four or five meetings a year, and it turns out that there was a bit more to it than that. Um, but I'm meeting all sorts of, of wonderful people who, who want to spend their time and effort making Haven a better place. So I don't think there's any sense that it all has to be corralled into one place. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not leading in that sense. I'm, I'm, I, I hope facilitating by bringing together the people who can make the change. Okay, anybody else for any questions? No? Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. Thank you for hosting us as well. Yeah, exactly. My pleasure. I'm sorry to talk more Okay, thank you. Can I just remind yeah. councillors to speak up when they're asking questions, please? That's all. Okay. So um, I just propose that we go on to the next item is 10C, because we have Mr Henry Wilson here. Um, so this item is Leisure and Community Working Party to move the adoption of the minutes of the Leisure and Community Working Party meeting and the recommendations contained therein held on the 14th September. So it's really in relation to C2, the grant award recommendation of 10,000 to reach. And I just wonder if uh, Mr Wilson would like to say something on that. No, yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, just very, very briefly, I mean, you don't need me to tell you how challenging it's been uh, a time over the last 18 months and yet you know that uh, we're about to go into a time which is going to be even more challenging for so many families um, it won't escape your attention i'm sure that the universal credit uh, uplift you know stops as of the 6th of october and um, you know we've had families who are calling us for uh, all manner of reasons um, often through no fault of their own, who are struggling, uh, just worrying about what to do. Um, you, you know, with uh, once you know that, that drops, it's um, people often talk about it being twenty pound a week as, as, as not being a, a you know it's not a huge amount, but eighty six pounds is basically what it is a month. And for some of the families we're working with, that's a good proportion of uh, of their. Um, Certainly, their their weekly shopping and more. You know, even their monthly shopping. I said monthly shopping. That's a while ago, actually. But uh, certainly, a single person might be spending twenty or thirty pounds a week on shopping. And so, it's going to be a really difficult time. Um, debt is going to rise, unfortunately, because people have actually stored debt. Uh, debt over the last certainly the eighteen months. Um, it, it's been pushed back a little bit. It's almost like kicking the can down the road. Um, evictions haven't been happening. Um, you know, if you're a private landlord and you're trying to get an eviction, it's very difficult to get an, uh, an eviction. But of course, these are now taking. You know, they are happening, and uh, so there are many challenges for the poorer families. There are many challenges for the middle-income families, especially with the increase of uh, the utility bills, which are going to happen. But when you add that to those that are on the poorer side of things it's going to be really difficult and we've been gearing ourselves up you know bearing in mind that we know this is going to happen and uh, we believe we're in a good position we've got plenty of food into into the warehouse um, and um, you know we you know we're bracing ourselves we've you know we've taken on uh, uh, an, an additional staff member so we've got uh, some additional funds from the Trussell Trust who are uh, supporting us for the next three years with uh, you know, taking on an additional outreach advisor just to ensure 
that we can get there because currently, as it stands at the moment, uh, you know, we've got a waiting list for debt. And when you think that the, it's, it's well over 60, 70% of the people who come to us and they've got rent arrears to start with and so they're worried about paying the rent. Often it can be a phone call to get it stopped. Well, often it's people like Hapra who are actually referring them to us in the first place, so that's why they've got uh, rent arrears and there's other um, organisations, Cosmopolitan and um, I, I can't think of the other ones. But certainly it's going to be challenging and like, so you know, we want to be in the best place possible to make a difference. And I just really want to say you know, that thank you very much for your support uh, over the years. We really couldn't have, you know, we just can't do it without the support of the general public and of course certainly from the town council as well. So do thank you uh, for your support. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, Councillor Marks, please. Um, yes, Henry, I hope you don't mind me asking this, but um, obviously for us, we are Haver Hill centric and concerned for Haver Hill. There, there's some conversation that you might be expanding out of Haver Hill Very much uh, so. in other areas, which is um, you know, slightly concerning for us when, when we're putting funds into things. Would you like to talk us through your, fund, your um, expansion plans and, and the rationale for that? Because, of course, you know, there are other, like citizens advice, who are actually covered in other areas, so that would be very helpful, please. Well, the, the situation arose last year, mainly through, um, it was LifeLink who were contacting us and asking us about whether or not we would be able to see some of their clients uh, over in the, in the Newmarket area. We generally turned it down, and we've always st you know, stayed away from things like that. But... Um, you know, with the pandemic and the new way of working, we, you know, we, we considered it, but then it, when it came to a point where somebody really was struggling with debt and they really needed some help, um, we did try and see if we could find some actually help for this one family in particular in Newmarket. And uh, in the end, we did. We did find it. That was from uh, an organisation in Ferris and Edmonds, Christians Against Poverty. And so uh, they got involved with, uh, with the client and um, I sent my colleague away to actually go and find out what else is available and so then that's when we started doing some research. Uh, we got some funds from Suffolk Community Foundation to launch a pilot, um, which we did for the first six months uh, of, the, of the year and the figures and the numbers were quite, uh, quite alarming. And, um, we put together a proposal and we've got some funding from um, an organisation called Hopkins Homes. Um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, James Hopkins and, uh, and uh, his organisation have put in the funding for an additional worker out in Newmarket. So in some respects it's just a, it, it's mirroring what we do and the way in which we do it in a very personable, relational approach actually lifting people out of, uh, you know, I say poverty, but financial hardship and crisis. Can I, uh, can I, yes, Councillor Martin. Can I just ask, um, how, how uh, obviously you're having conversations with citizens advice Absolutely. on that, and um, because that, that's an area that they've generally covered, I'm just, how, how do these people, are they not being covered by citizens advice, are they not managing? Well they do it in a very different way to what we would do and, and we do work quite well with, uh, um, well I think we work very well with citizens advice. The way in which we work is very much going into people's homes and actually uh, hand holding them through the situation. Um, we've found that by walking with somebody, you know, taking them on that journey, it will um, it does provide you know, good results, and it does mean that you can actually you know, stay in touch and actually get somebody through to the other side. That's certainly something that we've found. Um, and so if uh, we often find that the people that we're helping are what I might call more vulnerable, and so we'll need that additional hand-holding support. Um, when you think that the majority of those referrals are coming from LifeLink, so people with low-level mental health issues. Okay, Councillor Mason. Yeah, I'd just like to say again, Henry, thank you so much for the work that you and your team do, and uh, certainly good luck in the upcoming months with the pressure that come, uh, mm. is likely to come your way. Uh, slight, uh, two slight questions for you. Uh, firstly, have, have you considered applying to other parish councils like Newmarket as your reach is beginning to go further? Have you considered uh, applying uh, to other parish councils for support? Uh, and secondly, 
when you're faced with so many challenging cases, how does your team process and decide or prioritize uh, the level of need that you're faced with in, in terms of what the people uh, are presenting with? Does that make sense? It does. I don't really know how to answer that second question, really. I mean, obviously, we talk. We, we, we're regularly talking amongst the team about the, the difficulties. And we were regularly faced with some really harrowing stories and some really sad stories, as, as I'm sure you know, other organisations similar to ours you know, face as well. But um, it's about doing the very best that we can to support them. Um, hence, unfortunately, that's sometimes why we end up with uh, a little bit of a waiting list. But we generally triage or prioritise those with the most pressing needs. So, for instance, certainly if it's rent arrears, or mortgage arrears, which unfortunately is happening more so, um, and so doing what we can you know, to support those really. But sometimes it can be some really disastrous situations and it often might mean that some of the team might work early on into the evening, like we had a, a gentleman that was presented to us here in Haverhill just before Easter. And, um, and the situation was is that he was uh, um, well, he'd suffered bereavement and been placed in Haverhill in a, in a house of multiple occupancy and um, literally had absolutely nothing. And my colleague, uh, there's, a, there's a tapas restaurant, I don't know if we're uh, in, the, in, in, in Queen Street. They, they all provide hot food for our clients. And so, um, you know, which is fantastic. So Jo, jo Goodhall, um, she'll be the one who is often the one who tends to pick up on such a case like that. So she'll be taking around food in the evening, getting whatever we can. Um, and in fact, we've been going into houses pretty much, you know, for, well, probably the first lockdown didn't, people didn't go into houses, but certainly over the, you know, since June of last year, I and mean, certainly in January, we, we help people move in to a house when they would fallen on, you know, such bad, hard times. So, uh, so, so my first part of the question was, as, as your reach begins to extend beyond a mm -hmm. have you considered... Uh, Indeed, yes, very much so. Um, but again, it's building relationships, so all these things take time. Um, yeah, so that's something that we are in the process of doing. You know, I've uh, you know, certainly been talking to you know, people out in the new market, and so my colleagues as well. So. Okay, Councillor Henry, please. Yeah, thank you again, Henry, um, for all what you're doing and what you've done in the past as well. Um, my question is, um, obviously, the um, the companies like the electricity and gas, and then companies are, are going going bust. Um, unfortunately, I'm one of them that had that, um, and the bills are going to shoot up uh, something like five hundred pound a year. So I would say that's £10 a week for some people, and it's going to be really hard. How are you going to, because you will get a waiting list. You just said you've got you know, a longer waiting list. How are you going to sort of steer these people, um, you know, the ones that are on your waiting list? Do you still get in touch with them sort of people? Yeah, what we do is we've actually developed a, uh, an online service as well. So that's something which is... Um, it's in the process at the moment, so there are the, the tools are there in the background on our wait list, so we are able to, to direct somebody to you know how how to deal with issues that they might be facing. So advice, you know. So in other words, if you know just things like what might explain what the difference is between a priority debt or a non-priority debt, and what to do, you know, while they're actually waiting. But most of the ones that will be on the waiting list have got non-priority debts, and it's a case of putting them on hold. There is also a government scheme, and I can't remember for the life of me what it's called, where, where you can actually park debts for 60 days. Um, and I can't remember what the word is, what the, the phrase is. But we only do that, you know, you, you only do it once, if you see what I mean. So mm -hmm. there are things out there where you can actually get help. But of course, it's also about making contact with the person who's on the waiting list and let them know that we're still there and we are in touch and we'll be in touch and has anything got any worse. The main thing we're after is making sure that the um, that rent um, and mortgages and council tax, because that's all, often the one that uh, they do shout quite loudly, and so it's just making sure that those with council tax issues you know, are also addressed, and there's been an awful lot of those 
over the last, uh, certainly over the last 18 months. Can I also ask um, another question? How, what percentage of um, people outside compared with the people inside Haverhill um, do you sort of get in touch with or, or has got in touch with you? What percentage? Actually, no, I don't know the actual percentage, but I would say the majority, huge majority. What, the inside? In, in Haverhill, oh yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. So it's a very it's, small percentage it, it outside. Is. It is, actually. And so it, it, it's relative. I mean, I will, I will send, send through the figures. Um, in fact, I did actually present the figures on the night. Um, you know, the, the, the differences, you know, the numbers of people that are certainly, you know, affected locally. There are some in North Essex, because we go across the border, of course. There are some um, into um, Clare, Hundon, um, uh, sometimes into Linton. And so, you know, this is, and we've been doing this for, well, I've been doing it since... 2005, <laughs> going across the border really, you know, just to help people where they need it. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? No, thank you. Okay, so I think, um, should we treat that as a separate um, voting item or um, it in together? Uh, all of these would have to be separate, I'd have thought. Okay. So um, we're going to stay on items uh, 10C2, then the grant award recommendation. So thank you. Henry, um, Henry. Okay, so if I could have either some comments on that or a proposer. Sorry, Councillor Mason. Uh, uh, I seconded it at the working party, so I'm, uh, in the absence of Councillor Brown, I'm happy to propose uh, okay. the, the full amount of uh, £10,000 to reach. Thank you. So have I got a seconder for that? Sorry, Councillor Burns. Yeah, I second. Yeah, and if I can have a vote in favour. Yep, I think that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, so that's item that dealt with. So now, thank you for attending, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Um, okay, so we'll go to item, go back to the main agenda now. So we're going to item four, which is the minutes of the meeting of the Town Council held Tuesday the 27th of July 2021. May I have a proposal for to accept these minutes? Councillor McManus and seconder Councillor Hanlon. All those in favour? Yep. That's unanimous. Um, okay. So if it was fine. So initial the pages as we go. Okay, so now we're going to go to the um, item five to note the progress of actions arising from the minutes not covered by the agenda. So if you have a look at the minutes, um, page 186, anything? Nope. Page 187. I see there's an item C21114 for the clerk. Uh, yeah, so um, I have extended an invitation and asked uh, Kate Vorton for some dates, but I haven't had a response yet. Uh, I know that she wasn't able to attend the One Haverhill meeting last week, so I, I was assuming that she must be uh, on leave. Um, so what I will do is chase this, because I suspect... An NHS email inbox is probably quite deep and they probably need to get ours back to the top again. Okay, thank you. So go down the list, page 187. I don't think there's anything else. Page 188. Uh, that says, so Councillor Smith, Fox and Stinchcombe, which was to review it quality and diversity policy. I think we've got a meeting set up, haven't we? Thursday. Oh, yes. That's right. So our first meeting will be Thursday for that. Okay. Can't see anything else. Any no. other points to note? Anybody? From that? No, nope. thank you. So there's the one from the previous minutes that are on, that's on the agenda. Oh, is there? Sorry. So there's... C21092... The Festival of Suffolk. 
2021. It's on the agenda. Right? So, oh, it's on the agenda. Okay, well, we'll do that under the agenda. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. So. Can I just ask a question, if I may? Yes. Uh, page 190. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're right. There was one there. Um, no, it's actually, it doesn't say it's going to the Environment Agency. It says it's going to the Suffolk Flood Authority. Yeah, you talked about that. Okay. Uh, and I've forwarded that email on to everybody, I think. Okay. You've all got a copy of that. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot that was in the, buried in there. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so we've on the um, on the agenda we've got C twenty one oh nine two. You say from the previous minutes, was it? Yes, yeah, so it was from yeah. the previous minutes. You may recall we got a, a rather vague invitation to take part in the festival of Suffolk and to send a named representative to the meetings. Um, there has. Subsequently, there's been an invitation to the chairs of uh, um, councils, which I forwarded on to you. Um, and I've also had some separate uh, guidance through the Suffolk Association of Local Councils, uh, which is that they are looking for each community to put on an event um, that would be um, effectively badged a festival of Suffolk event so one of the things that we might do in 2022 in any case um, that we might particularly want to use that as um, a theme the festival of suffolk appears to be what the ask is but i'm sure the mayor will be able to report back if you're able to make that meeting yeah okay you forwarded the date on to me yeah yeah thank you okay then any questions around that no Okay. So if we go on to item six then, reports from the district county councillors on issues pertinent to Haverhill and the public forum. So the first one from the police, have we got anything on that? Uh, uh, Inspector Ferry will come to the next meeting. Um, uh, he was invited to this one, but uh, he's asked to come to the next meeting, which will be just before his retirement. Um, so he, he felt that was a better meeting for him to come to. I believe Councillor Burns did circulate uh, some figures. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 So the crime stats sorry. have been circulated. Yeah. Any comments on that at all? No. Okay. So the next one is the from the county councillors. So if I can ask the county councillors to make a new reports. Um, First, anybody came to Councillor Roach? Yeah, um, I wish continues to be a thing. Um, I'm not finding that you raise faults on bits and pieces and highways will promptly close them down rather than actually fixing them. So um, I'm taking, I'll take that up with um, the uh, cabinet member for operations highways. Um, but we just keep badgering away and I'm just keep making sure that, that we keep doing that. Um, the lay by on the bypass, which is missing the time plates, which supposedly they were ordered um, going right the way back to Council of Fox today. Um, they haven't happened, they still haven't happened, and they keep closing the, the uh, report down, so I'm not dealing with that. Um, but that's the bulk of it at the moment, is, is highways issues. Mm, okay, that's quite, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm Councillor Burns. Yeah, can I just, uh, related to those, um, Councillor Ray, um, one of the, uh, I agree with you about the highways, um, the reporting tool, it was something I, five years ago, I was spending an enormous amount of time trying to get them to change it, and they refused to do so. They have a, it's a terrible thing for the end user, and really it's about time they rewrote the thing. Um, an example is the uh, drain that's uh, down Dudley Hill opposite. Collins Road, they said they've inspected it, it's blocked totally, but their answer is, we, oh, um, it's quite difficult to fix, so we're just going to basically ignore it, um, which in turn floods down all the way down his region road and Waverley Terrace. And the signs on the bypass, I'm just going to, I mean, it predates Council of Fox, it, it actually goes back to 2016, here we are five years later, they still haven't done it. Well, we did have them. To be fair, they were there, and then they were removed. So that because if you don't have the time plates, you can't you can't enforce the TRO. Correct. Um, Correct. 
So once we get the time plates back, then we can arrange for the enforcement officers to do some. The enforcement officers but won't do it because they go not work beyond 8 o'clock at night. But that's, that's the other argument then we're having with West Suffolk. No, 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 no. So, you know, yeah. they need to, highways need to take ownership of a problem and work on it, just don't ignore it. Yeah. I think that's the thing. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Sowell, welcome. welcome. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, good evening, my name is Heike Sova and I'm one of the um, Suffolk County Council as well. Um, now, what I would like you to know is, sorry, I'm always having this in the way, um, <laughs> is um, there is a green award which will be, I hope you have emails received by the County Council, but I think it's worth thinking about what sort of element of Haverhill could get the greenest award. For example, a primary school or a secondary school, or are we very good environmentally with our town council or the arts center or with recycling? We have the new recycling center, but we need to nominate something, I think. It would be good. So the Suffolk County Council encourages us to think about a sort of green award. The other thing is, which I um, would like you to know is that the County Council is thinking really hard how to solve the NHS problem and the GP surgeries in town. So we do discuss things like um, taking a um, different approach to, to um, the current um, way we deal with problems. So there are lots of meetings going on and hopefully, fingers crossed, things will change soon. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay then, so we'll go on to the district councillors then, please. If there's any district councillors. Councillor Marks? Um, yeah, there are uh, just a few things. That is, uh, you, you may not be aware that there's a, a pretty big controversy going on about taxes at the moment. And just to, there is a, a consultation going on with taxes at the moment, and it's about the hackney carriages. There is a requirement on them at the moment, all to provide which are accessible taxes which is putting an enormous burden on the taxi owners and the taxi drivers, not least post-COVID, when they had little work during the COVID period, and now they are being asked to do this uplift, which is about 20% extra to buy them. Um, and so there's an awful lot going on on that, and I think you're going to see a lot more about that in the press. I think other, other counties are taking a slightly different approach. They are allowing a percentage to be wheelchair accessible, so not quite sure where it's going to go, but there will be quite a lot about it, but please know that it is it is being looked into, it's not being ignored, so that's quite encouraging really. Um, the With regard to health, just uh, taking on to, um, to Heike's here, as you probably know, um, Gary Norgate, who leads the new hospital build project, you've got Kate Bornton is actually now chairing that, so in addition to all of her other work, she's now chairing that as an integration officer to help facilitate integration and make it more seamless. The good part about that is that because of COVID, they've been able to forge forward quite a lot quicker with the planning uh, application. So they are hoping to get the planning application in for the new hospital build uh, before the end of the year, which is what the timeline was originally. So that's looking very positive, and West Suffolk are working very, very closely with them on planning to help achieve that. And keeping on that topic and talking about primary care, which is an enormous um, problem at the moment, as we know, Lois Rethel, who has been supportive of Hayley Hill for 20 years and pretty much in my life for 20 years, has been extraordinary. She, her knowledge and her support here has been exemplary, and I would really like to propose that this council thanks her for her work because she is leaving. Covid broke Lois, it was a nightmare for her, and the, the pressure on her was absolutely unbelievable. I don't know if she's staying in health. We hope she will because her knowledge would be, you know, is invaluable really. It would be awful to lose that. But it would be quite nice if we could write and thank her for all that she's done for her. So, okay. that's, my so that's your proposal. Yeah. Um, that's my proposal. Okay. Chair, we've, we've already, that, you've, you've already made that proposal a few meetings back and we've already written and thanked her when, and she, first already, an, when she first announced her retirement yeah, and then, she's acknowledged she, it and she thanked us. Yeah. And, and her replacement's in, who is actually a nurse, um, but obviously she's not going to come with the background that Lois has on primary care, which is going to be perhaps challenging going forward. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Mark. Sorry, I didn't come in. That's probably. Um, I'm I so passionate mean. about what she does. I just think it's such yeah. a tragedy to lose her, really. Okay, any other? Uh, Councillor Smith. Um, yeah, not a lot to report really. Um, thankfully, uh, Councillor Burns does a very good job for us with what's going on at uh, District Council. But um, there, uh, one thing that is coming up um, starting this week is the next round of the uh, local plan um, process under the chairmanship of Councillor Roach. Uh, first meeting is this Wednesday, I believe. Um, so um, I think we're still looking for um, people's comments, are we? Or is that closed? Yeah, um, sorry. I'll pick that up if you do you want to just pick up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just about to say the only other thing really that uh, I'm getting a lot of um, contact about is is the state of the paths and the amount of um, uh, yeah overgrowing weeds coming through paths and whatever. Um, and a lot of the time, is the issue is is over ownership, as we know, um, people take responsible for it, whether it's Havery, whether it's West Suffolk, whether it's Suffolk County Council. Um, but anyway. Can I, can I answer that bit about the That's papers nice, yeah. and weeds? May I? May I? Um, so uh, I've been walking with Haythbury once a month and, um, and I've met with Mark Walsh and we now have an agreement that under the Keep Haver Hill tidy banner we are going to buy four trimmers and they were battery operated with two uh, batteries. There are four of us who've actually volunteered that we will um, write our own uh, um, risk assessment for that. The money will, be, will, have, will come from locality money, they're not expensive to buy. And when we get real challenges where people really have a bad area, and we've seen some up on the Clements, the problem being is although the Clements is predominantly Havebury housing, it is not Havebury pavements. So you've got people who really look after their gardens and they walk outside their gate and it's a nightmare, it looks absolutely awful. So, you know, in addition to the role we have, we can go along with the strimmers. We'll go along as a group. We've already agreed that. We will strim areas and we will clear them and bag them and take them away. And that's all agreed with West Suffolk. It's all agreed with, with Mark Walsh. Um, and, uh, and I did actually talk to Colin about that today and he's happy that we filled the money through that. So this isn't an onerous task. We're not looking at people doing it all. One of the problems that's happened, and Mark explained this, is historically... West Suffolk or, or St Edmundsbury used to go and do the de-weeding or whatever you called it and they did it three times a year and it was paid for by Suffolk County Council. Suffolk County Council has cut the funding to once a year and the problem with that being is if, if West Suffolk then go and do the, the weeding, everybody sees their vehicles going out and doing it and they get all the complaints and all the abuse and Mark said he's not prepared to put his staff under that anymore. So Suffolk County Council either need to revert to three times um, a year, and I think we maybe need to make representation to that because it's not fair on our residents, or um, they have a private contractor coming who isn't doing a great job. So that's the situation regarding the, the weeds. I hope that's okay, David. Um, yeah, yeah. Bit of a heads up would be nice. No, it would be nice to have been told, but that's what's this going on. Well, this is all, I mean, it's only because I met with Mark last week. And, and asked, you see, I'd originally asked Colin if he had them, and, and I think Colin, you weren't, you, were concer you had concerns, did you not? Um, well, we won't, the, the town council, our parish handyman, won't strim uh, in, a, in a public place uh, because of the danger of, of flicking stones up. But that's a, a, a high-powered strimmer, whereas I think you've uh, yeah, got an agreement it. for, for low-powered strimmers, yeah. which are unlikely to yeah. present the same risk. But that's, it's all happened, you know, literally, I spoke to Colin today, so, it, you know, that's why it hasn't really been discussed. Can I ask Councillor Marks, how are you going to prioritise what areas? Um, is it I think what people complain about? I, I think, um, you know, obviously the, the Keep Head Hill Tidy group will discuss that as a collective and anybody mm -hmm. who wants to be part of that, so we're not excluding any councillors from being part of that, that's not, mm -hmm. it just happens to be us four because we've discussed it. But I think obviously if people complain, um, I mean I was most concerned that we've had a complaint about the Green Bridge and I did ask David to go and have a look at it because there are people in wheelchairs who can't get across it, but I think that's too big for us to handle David, isn't it? So, so we will, if people complain, we'll go out and we will deal with, with their areas and if I'm walking with Haveby and I see something really big, I will document it and we'll nip out and deal with it because, you know, potentially we'll do whatever we can we, in the same way as we litter pick. Because to be honest, it's really no more onerous than litter picking, you know, to run the stream along. So, 
you know, we're happy to go out and do whatever we can to try and help our residents until perhaps we get a better solution from the County Council. This shouldn't be a replacement for a service that's inadequate, Liz. This is just really hand-holding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Mason, you want to come in and then... Yeah, I'd just like to thank Councillor Marks for the work uh, that she's done uh, on this. Uh, Keep Hayfield Tidy is a non-political group, and I would invite uh, ward councillors, if they have a concern over a particular area, uh, that you think might be doable with uh, a small team of uh, volunteers going out there, then to, to get in touch with members of the group. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Joe, sorry, can I ask you to speak up? I I'm, can't hear I'm you. sorry, it's because I'm bending down. I don't ask. Yeah, really quickly, Keep Hayville Tide is a non-political group and I would invite members of all the different wards, if you've got a concern about an area, do get in contact with the members such as uh, Elaine, uh, Margaret and myself, and we'd be more than happy uh, to uh, uh, tackle a particular area. Of course, we're not going to go into people's gardens, it, it, it's going to have to be those areas that uh, would be legitimate to do so. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Councillor Roach, you wanted to go on about the local yeah, plan? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dave's quite right, we're restarting after the summer break. Um, what we've done over the, over the gap was to ask members of the working group um, members of district planning, um, the planning committee and cabinet to comment on specifically on West Suffolk planning policy um, over the summer so that when we start to do the work of looking at the next suite of policies for planning that we we can try and tackle those that work, those that don't and where <coughs> that we particularly get at, at planning where we have to we'll make decisions that are not in line with policy because the policy just has become sort of outdated, but we're stuck with what we've got. So I've asked for comments for that over the summer. What I will say is, if anybody here wants to make comments on West Suffolk planning policy and you want to feed them to me, if you've got gripes on what works and what doesn't work, um, especially <coughs> the councillor hand of the chair's planning committee at the town council, um, if there's stuff that you think this doesn't really work or we'd like to see a change, then let me know, I'll still take those comments forward. Um, we will then start in this next session of local plan, we'll be starting looking at a, a new suite of policies and developing those. We'll also be looking then at allocating sites for the next local plan. So part of the process every year is what's called SHEDA, which is a strategic um, site. So people can offer sites up for development and then they either get adopted or deferred, and deferred is another way for rejected. So if a if a set of, if a if a area is put forward for development and it's deferred, when you see deferred it means it's been effectively rejected, it doesn't meet the criteria, so it doesn't come forward. Um, <coughs> so we'll be doing site allocations for the next plan coming up. And then once we've got all of that work together, there'll be another consultation coming up next year that will go out to um, the public and to, and to councils for comment. So that's really where we are, but it's, it's certainly, I'll take the opportunity if anybody wants to have a have a comment on planning policy to let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll take it on board. Okay, thank you. Councillor Henlon. Yeah, just to, thank you Dave for that. Um, just in reply to David, um, the Town Council Planning Committee are, are really pushing and I don't think obviously you can do much as for this for, as a local plan, but they're really pushing hard for health facilities in Hayville. Um, you know the lack of, um, as I say, it's especially primary care. Um, you know, it's even in dentists and what have you now. But as I say, you know, I know it's hard because all you provide in local plan is an area um, for them sort of facilities. But um, I, I just wondered. This is a question to you, really, David. I just wonder if, if um, you know, anything could be written in as far as health facilities is, is concerned um, in the local plan. The answer to that is, is basically no, it's not how it works. A local plan is there to formulate where housing growth is. 
and then when you get applications come forward, part of the process then is that money gets allocated to healthcare, whether through the 106 agreements or some or a developer might put in that they want to build a doctor surgery. But how that's funded is part of the NHS process. It's not part of the planning process. So planning can determine place and space, but it can't it can't provide provision. And, and it's a it's a difficult. It's a difficult concept because we see it time and time again, don't we, that um, we think that every big development should come with uh, doctors or health facilities or dentists, but that's not the way the planning system works in this country. It's not, the planning doesn't provide the NHS resource. You know, and, um, you know, doctor surgeries, they're all private businesses. They're not, they're contracted to the NHS. They're not part of it. They're not part of it. Um, and you can't you can't make people provide services through a planning process. You can allocate you can ask for money through 106 or sell, but you can't make something happen. Yeah, um, what I'm trying to get at is is in local plans they have sort of an area put down for um, facilities like shops and things like that. Um, I, I'm just wondering whether there could be something written into it that this should be for primary care. That's what I'm sort of, you know, saying, is, is something written into it. Um, because there is areas that are written in, in for instance, where homes are, the missing homes are, that there is an area there that, that is for the public um, facilities, which is shops and what have you there. Um, community centre, things like that. So I'm just wondering if there could be an area set in, written in that this is for primary care. Um, I, I don't think you can. Is, is the short answer because you? How do you allocate it? You you could you could take a bit of land and say we'd like to see a health facility there, but there's no vehicle to make it happen. Okay, um, Councillor Marks and then Councillor Mason, please. Um, just. Just on uh, Pat's comment about primary care, and um, at the moment, the new West Hospital, West Suffolk Hospital Bill Program, are just right at this moment looking at co location of non acute services. And I do urge all of you to keep a really close eye on any consultations that happen locally because they will start talking about the services they're going to co locate. And what we want to make sure is they don't end up in Stone Market so that we can't access them. So we don't know yet what they're going to co-locate. We know that they will be co-locating quite a lot. And, and, and you know, so when, when you're looking at co-location, it doesn't have to be co-located in one location. It could be co-located and split in different ones. Um, with regard to dentists, uh, this is a particular issue that uh, Haiki and I have taken up at, at scrutiny. So at the moment, dentists are managed, or not managed, by NHS England. And that's going to change in, at the end of March, beginning of April next year. Clinical commissioning is changing its name, and it is changing its name to integrated services, which, um, as you know, they just changed their name, it doesn't mean a lot really. But they're going to inherit dentists and podiatrists. The problem with that is the, the money will follow the service, so whatever currently is the funding will follow from NHS down to the new integrated service centre. I've asked Richard Watson if any more money is going to come with it. I know now that that is not. And therefore, I've asked Richard Watson, what service are you going to cut in order to fund dentistry? And he said he'll come back to me and I'm still waiting. So I think that is going to be a real, real nightmare going forward. We also have asked that they put dentistry back into schools because I think that's a real... We're seeing lots of children who are not actually getting the service at all. But again, you come back to this situation where they are predominantly private. Now, I do know that NHS England, there is a requirement on all dentists that they have a certain percentage of NHS. And I'm going to challenge through, through um, scrutiny to ask if that quota is being met, who is meeting it, and if it's not, what are they doing about it? So, so we are, you know, we're not going to leave it. You've got Heike and I both in scrutiny now, and we will not leave these issues. But, but funding and, and that they have choice. Unfortunately, they come up, they, they're doctors, they don't have to come into primary care. We can't force them to come here. 
But going back to your idea on planning, there is one thing that could possibly happen, but it would require some planning, and that is Section 106 money paying for the doctor. Actually, then you can bring them under your own umbrella. So if there was a way of using Section 106 money to fund their salary, there is a possibility of bringing them out of the NHS and under our own banner. That's a possibility for the future. So Thank sorry, you. I can't be more helpful on that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mason. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure how much I want to add on to this. Uh, Councillor Griffith, uh, the leader of the Council of West Suffolk, uh, uh, in the uh, district council meeting, uh, which was held at Newmarket Racecourse, mentioned uh, the notion of the Haverhill Hub about six times during his speech. And the overview and scrutiny are followed up by asking where on paper is this concept. And the problem is it's such a multi-agency approach. And as uh, Councillor Marks quite rightly said, primarily it's an NHS project as to whether we would get anything uh, in Haverhill. I still think there is scope for challenging West Suffolk with the development of what this hub is and what it could be and where the discussions are with them at a multi-agency level as to what facilities it might include. Uh, Mildon Hall Hub recently opened and they've had shopping problems with uh, the GP uh, practice not taking up their option of um, the Mildon Hall Hub. And so probably we wouldn't be looking at uh, uh, GP, well, it wouldn't be my preference to get a, a, a GP provider in, in some port, port sort of hub facility, but in terms of outreach with West Suffolk Count, uh, with West Suffolk Hospital, with outpatient services making life easier for residents in Haverhill, for me that would be my my preference for added facilities in the town, and I would urge West Suffolk uh, councillors, district councillors, to uh, make appeals to uh, a West Suffolk Council to see how this is progressing, because uh, there's not an awful lot on paper, but it is still said about the Haverhill Hub. And so uh, it's, it's very complicated, it's a multi-agency, and it's very slow moving. Yeah, I think I've heard of it mentioned a few times of some of the meetings I've been to. Um, may still. I just say, it might be worth asking Sarah Howard to come along. Sarah is working on the Alliance, which roughly means she's bringing together a lot of parties to work together and do exciting things. It might be quite nice to invite her to come along and see what's on her agenda and how is that progressing. So she's, she, you know, she's very progressive as a person. So just, I mean, we might learn something. Okay, we can we do that? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is deja vu evening for you. Yeah. You've suggested that before, that before as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, we're not getting anywhere. Uh, <laughs> We emailed her, and I know at the time, unfortunately, I believed that she had contracted COVID, and I'd never got a response out of her okay. at all. So I will chase that up again. Okay. I think formally we need to. Yeah. We need to. You know, these people. It was a formal request. A formal yeah. request. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think she might be quite useful in answering some of these more strategic questions. Mm. Was there anybody else? But uh, Councillor Roach. Just one other thing um, for members that not on district may not know. Um, at Cabinet, there have been some minor changes to what portfolios uh, are um, responsibility. So I've now taken over, in addition to local plan, I've taken on the whole of planning, and Councillor Drummond has now taken on licensing and... Um, what's the other thing? Regulatory. Sorry? Regulatory. Regulatory, yeah. So, okay, um, and Sarah Malvmo-White. And Sarah Malvmo-White has taken on some health. Health, health... But we don't know what she's taken on. Yeah. So, so effectively, the, the things that affect us most are, are things like licensing and, and planning. But I've now got the whole portfolio for planning and and uh, local plan. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we better move on to the next item. D members of the public are welcome to make statements or put questions at this time. Well, we have no Same. members of the public, so um, we can skip that one. Um, okay, so. This is very much in relation to what we've been saying, the next item on the agenda about health matters in Haverhill. Um, the first one on the agenda is, is closure of steeple bumps to surgery. So was there somebody who was going to speak on that, or are we going to have questions? Um, well, obviously this took, while, it took place a while back, but the councillors haven't had their opportunity to talk about it in terms of any feedback. I believe that there's the, uh, we can still put feedback in to the end of this week. Okay. 
So is there any, are there any comments on that or feedback you want on that? No? Nothing to say? <laughs> well, it's not a COVID safe environment. It's very tiny. Okay. It's really challenging. And, it, and it, it's, it's not been well looked after over the years. So it's challenging. challenging. So that's really... So I believe that it's the site that was the problem rather than saving money by taking GPs away sort of thing. Um, it was I mean, the surgery took it on mm -hmm. because, so, so basically, it was run by North East Essex CCG and actually a company called Provide took it on, which isn't a very satisfactory name because what they did was they up sticks and walked away from it in the middle of their contract. So, mm -hmm. so basically, it, it was just going to leave 2,000 people with nothing. And so it was taken on in, in, in a crisis, during a crisis, with the best will. But when everybody went over there to look at it, it was none of the services had been maintained. We looked at the equipment, they were out of date by years. Oxygen cylinders that were three or four years out of date. Equipment that hadn't been tested. It was absolutely diabolical. And so Andy, Cathy, who was absolutely superb, tried really hard to bring it round, the, the, the maintenance, the heating kept breaking down. So every time they tried to open it, they ended up having to close it. And actually, that was worse than not opening it at all, really. So, and then COVID came. And I mm. think it was never a COVID safe environment, it's safe timing. Okay. It was a really challenging situation. So I think to blame the doctor's surgery would be pretty awful because they tried really hard. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith. I think, yes, it is going to put more strain on our health provision within the town, but morally it is the right thing to do that um, we provide for the uh, villages of uh, Steeple Plumstead. We can't leave them without that provision. Okay. Councillor Lucrini and then Councillor Burns. Oh, I thought you said sorry. Councillor Burns. I just want to know, what does Steeple Plumstead Parish Council, what they said about it? I've not heard anything other than that initial... We're going to close. I've not been asked specifically myself. I don't know whether they've been, you know, have the residents been asked anything? <coughs> do we know? There is a consultation, wasn't there, online? Yeah, but do we know what the result that was? No, no, this so. is to feed into it. It doesn't close until the okay. 30th. Yeah, I would like to know what the parish council think, you know, representing their residents. They never contributed to it. Okay, um, I did have a letter from um, a member of the public who was obviously quite disturbed that they were closing that down and, and as you know, some of the comments on social media, people think we're losing GPs and, and, and that's the, the sort of reaction that you get. Um, uh, Councillor Smith did help me in, in contacting West Suffolk um, of, officers about the S706 money and how that is used so that we can explain to members of the public um, sort of how that works and, and where the money is going or there's discussions around where that money is going. So um, we're working on a response to the, um, Councillor Smith and myself, um, on a response to this particular member of the public at the moment. Um, I have got, uh, so I've got an email, uh, Councillor David Smith had an email from, who was the officer? Yes. Rachel Armand, who uh, passed it on to the Section 106 officer, I can't remember his name, sorry, who gave okay. the, uh, Dave Birkin. the yeah. uh, breakdown. So we had quite a nice breakdown spent. of the S106 money in regard to health matters, um, which I can circulate to, to you all if, you, if you're interested, um, just to see how he's broken it down um, and where, what, what money is coming from Persimmon and from Red Row. Okay, so I'll send that round to you all and you can have a look at that in case you didn't know the detail. Some of you might do. <laughs> can, can I just say I have sent that data around in the past for okay. all the developments because he sends me regular updates. Okay. Yeah, I'll forward it again just in case people I have want one it again. A couple weeks ago. Okay, thank you, um, Councillor Burns. Um, okay, so um, that's the closure of Steeple Bumstead. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Domestic Abuse Survivor Report, which is the one from Karen, is it that one? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is from Karen Chapel. Uh, it's basically uh, highlighting um, the uh, potential for work with victims of domestic abuse. Um, um, You'd have heard some of that at the One Haverhill meeting, those people who attended. Um, uh, that there's 
Obviously, we know that the uh, centre is all in Bury St Edmunds, but um, uh, survivors are coming down to Haverhill, and it's what support that's available for them. Uh, and um, uh, our staff have had some training, um, and this is really just to um, ask your permission to uh, uh, allow Karen uh, to take on this work because obviously it's different to the work that um, she would normally be doing um, uh, in terms of the client group and the reason for doing it uh, but in terms of the pastoral support that she's offered to young people who've had emotional challenges etc um, there's a lot of similarity in terms of the work and the skills that are needed Okay, Castor Burns. Oh, yeah, I fully support this. is part of the One Haverhill um, Antisocial Behaviour Task Group, which I'm a member of. Um, we discuss this regularly with Helen Tullough and, and others. Um, we all know what's happened in, in lockdown, particularly with domestic abuse. Uh, and it works both ways. Um, I actually had cause to remonstrate with the uh, uh, police and Crime Commissioner's Office, where it was only, they only said it only happens to women and young girls, mm -hmm. where of course it happens not to the same extent, of course, but to uh, everybody. Um, I fully support this. The only thing I was I was a little bit confused about, um, and it may be the way it's been written. Um, the last paragraph says the council agreed with office support. I do that. We'd like to suggest of looking at offering the venue, and I was just wondering what venue we're talking about. Um, so this is the um, uh, uh, support for the one-to-one -one basis in terms of mentoring. So it's in the paragraph above, yeah. the work that's involved in that, allowing that to happen at the zone. Oh, the zone. It doesn't mention the zone. Yeah. That's the no. thing. Um, which that's is fine. where they work. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can I propose we offer that support? Yeah, oh, I'll second. Oh, <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so proposed by Councillor Burns and seconded by Councillor McManus. Um, all those in favour? Yes. Thank you. Unanimous. Okay, so now we're going to item eight, the mayor's report. Um, I apologise that I was very late in getting this written up, and then I left it at home, unfortunately. <laughs> so I was going to table it. So I'll I'll. I circulate it via email later on, um, but I'll just cover a few of the, the main the main um, the main items in that. Um, in July, I um, asked the full council. I attended the um, High Sheriff's summer party, which is probably the first event really that most people were going to that was out in the open and after the COVID restrictions. And it was nice to get out there and meet people, you know, physically, <laughs> face to face. Um, very impressed by the work that the High Sheriff does and he and his wife who I had a quite, quite a long conversation with. I think Councillor Marks was there as well, weren't you? So, um, yeah, so uh, that was an enjoyable evening. And then following that I had, um, I was asked to, well not judge, but to uh, go and sort of present the award for the minis. I don't know if you remember the minis on the, on the um, market square. Uh, that was all by, by Sean from Kitchen Sean, and I can't think of his surname at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Hill, yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so yeah, he was he was organised that because he's got a couple of minis that he has. Um, and that, yeah, that um, again was in the early days of people sort of coming out, so there weren't that many, but there still, you know, there was still some interest there. Um, otherwise, it was quiet, relatively quiet in August. Um, but in you know September, I met oh I met with the um, town centre manager for the first time. I met her, and we talked about um, the bid process that she's going through at the moment, and also about the preparation she's doing for the women's tour. And I think there's something going on next weekend, um, which I've volunteered. I'm not sure what I've been volunteered for, but I've volunteered for something this uh, this coming weekend. Okay, so. Um, the Battle of Britain I attended, the, uh, the invite of Councillor Marks I attended the other day, and that was a very moving service, um, which I didn't quite know what to expect, because I've never been to the Battle of Britain one before, but having a brother in the RAF, that was very interesting, and um, I was trying to see if I could recognise the ranks on the, on the uniforms, 
So, so yeah, the, things are happening um, slowly, but surely. Um, and uh, with the women's tour coming, it's going to be a little bit busy over the next couple of weeks. But I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, that's my report. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, item nine, one have your partnership. Obviously, we've covered A. So, B is to approve a transfer of £633 from 9001 one Haver Hill earmarked reserve being the remaining funds held in that reserve for HTC expenditure on partnership matters to 9024 one Haver Hill partnership funds earmarked reserve being the reserve funds held by HTC on behalf of the partnership. So um, if I can, Councillor Burns, did you want to just propose? Oh, yeah. Um, Councillor Mark, second. Only favour? Thank you. Okay, so then we go on to the adoption of committee reports under item 10. So the planning working party to move the adoption of the minutes of the planning working party meetings and the recommendations contained therein held 10th of August, 7th and 21st of September. <coughs> so hopefully you've all had a chance to look at those minutes. May I have a proposer to accept those? Uh, Councillor Lucarini and secondly Councillor Hanlon. All in favour? Thank you. Next one, 10B, Energy and Sustainability Working Party. To move the adoption of the minutes of the Energy and Sustainability Working Party meetings and the recommendations contained therein, held 23rd of August and 20th of September. So again, hopefully you've, you've um, closed. Um, should we go for button one with that, along with that? Um, um, it'd probably be separate, better to do it separate. Okay. So, yeah, if we... Uh, we uh, have a proposal to adopt the minutes. Councillor Burns? Yeah. Seconder? Councillor Smith? All in favour? Thank you. That's the yeah, end thank you. So, um, item one under that, ESC 21053, approval of 6,000 budget for the Climate Action Support Programme. Do you want to speak on that? Uh, yeah, this is specifically um, about getting a whole town um, climate footprint calculated um, so that it, with some degree of accuracy so that we can better benchmark uh, when there are activities happening, such as the um, uh, programme that we're doing with Groundworks in relation to encouraging people to take up low cost or no cost changes um, when we do repeats and say two or three years time um, having a reasonably accurate carbon footprint now will make it easier for us to actually point to any changes we've managed to make uh, otherwise the the figures you can get off the kind of internet models for free are so ballpark that actually you you you've the the margin of error is huge so you could do a whole load of work and then do the check again and have nothing to show for it okay any questions on that councillor mason can, can you t explain to me why it's so necessary um because if we don't know exactly what the climate what the uh, carbon footprint is of the town at the moment uh, then we don't have any idea of whether we're making any progress whatsoever um, towards uh, becoming carbon neutral uh, by 2050. Uh, uh, so we, we, the idea is basically we, we will get reasonably accurate figures, particularly on the domestic side, um, to know uh, the sort of bills people are having. Um, and therefore, when changes start coming, we're able to demonstrate whether or not Haverhill is ahead of the curve or behind the curve compared to other towns. We'll be able to benchmark ourselves um, uh, because other communities are doing the same uh, uh, score system. So it will be possible to actually compare whether or not we're making differences. Um, so yeah, without it, we just won't have a clue whether we make any difference at all. Any other questions before we take a vote? So may I have a proposal for that item? 
Councillor Hanlon and seconder Councillor Smith. All those in favour? Six. Uh, any against? Any abstaining? Okay, so there's six, four. Yeah, it's carried. Okay, so um, the next one. 10C. I'm sorry to jump in early. Could, we just, uh, could I just ask one question? Is it possible that we could have some sort of indicator on the process of how that will work fundamentally? I don't, I don't, want, I don't want war and peace, but kind of just how will they measure it? Um, so basically they will carry out a survey of as many um, dwellings as they can um, and then they will, they'll know what sort of dwelling it is and how many people in it. We, we know that information for the entire town. So if we know the, uh, the, the average fuel bills that people are getting from those different houses, they can then multiply up all the two-bedroom terraces by the number of two-bedroom terraces there are, the three-bedroom semis by the number of three-bedroom semis. So, so they'll have, they'll know basically the sort of uh, actual energy bills, the actual consumptions, the actual activities that people are doing um, uh, across all different housing types. And you can then add the whole lot together and you get quite a reasonably accurate idea of um, the town's footprint. Obviously, the more people who take part, uh, the more accurate it becomes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. So, item uh, 10C. The adoption of the Leisure Community Working Party minutes meeting and the recommendations contained therein held the 14th of September. So may I have a propose of that, Councillor Burns? Can I just, sorry, uh, just you ask you a question on that? Mm -hmm. are we, uh, sorry, are we starting on the first one, but uh, on the list? The... We will do that in a moment. First oh, of all, we'll just adopt the minutes. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first of all, we'll just adopt the minutes, yeah. So, Councillor Burns. Seconder, anybody? Councillor Smith. Um, all those in favour of adopting the minutes? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. So, uh, item one under that are the grant award recommendations for Home Start, which was one of the recommendations of the working party, of four thousand pound. So, have we got any questions on that? Yeah, Councillor Mason. Yeah, just just really quickly, I, I, I didn't manage to get my amendment in before, and I'm not suggesting amendment now. But there was some discussion after the vote regarding maybe getting a little bit more information about this group or, or in, uh, inviting them to produce report. I don't think I saw that in the minutes, uh, unless I've missed it. Uh, and, and I just wondered whether, if if the town councils uh, uh, agree to approve that grant request. Uh, at some point we, we asked because there didn't seem to be an awful lot of knowledge about what this group act is actually doing in the town. Yeah, I think I recall the discussion we had. We took the vote and then we discussed, didn't we, about the um, possibility of asking them in future to come to council in a, at a future session. Do you, uh, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. That was there. It's not, it should be. I apologise. It's not in the minutes of the meeting, but uh, yeah. that can be handled when they... Um, uh, correct, they look at the minutes of the meeting uh, when it comes on Tuesday the 9th of November. But yeah, it was certainly noted that we need to invite them along. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other comments on that before we go? No? Okay then, so can I have um, a proposal for that one? Uh, Councillor Carini and then seconder Councillor Marks. Um, all those in favour? Yep, unanimous, thank you. So we've already dealt with item two, so we're going to item three there. Uh, the grant award recommendation of 1,975 to Churches Together. Any um, questions on that, yeah. first of all? Sorry, could we have to could, cancel the meeting now? Could you just tell me what the money's for? Uh, if I recall... It's a uh, community uh, celebration of Christmas. I believe they're going to uh, uh, construct a large nativity scene, etc. For everyone to see. Yeah. Yeah, so there was some discussion around that, but yeah. hopefully it's shown in the minutes. Yeah. Any other questions, Councillor Smith? Um, yeah, the, the minutes to the working party says it's 1,775. 
£1,975 and the agenda today says £1,975. I think there was a £200 discrepancy, well not discrepancy wasn't it, it was because they were going to get some £200 from um, printing of you know, sheets. Uh, donations and things. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, so the of sheets. Sheets. In, yeah. yeah in, in kind sort of thing and they yeah. hadn't included that in their figure, had they? So um, they'd asked actually for one seven. Was it 1795? But when we discussed it, we saw, or 1775, we yeah. saw that there was £200 in potential. Yeah. Uh, then, then again, in the, he also said that we agreed on 1475. Yeah, that's, that's a typo in the minutes. Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so perhaps we can clarify if it's yeah. the 1975. Yeah, we'll get that corrected before they're presented for approval. So, what is the actual amount? It's 1975. Because, as was said, the, the 1775 they asked for was because they said we're going to have £200 worth of printing done. Uh, and I think Councillor Burns was wanting to cover the possibility that they didn't get that. Yeah, do you recall that, Councillor Burns? <laughs> yeah, because it was, it was £200 from um, a, a music place because they were going to cover the uh, yeah. licensing. Yeah, well. they, they said they needed 200 pounds for licensing, but um, I think it was yourself, Chair, wasn't it, who said they can they got like a global license or something. I think it's Council Smith. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've got some experience in my own church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So perhaps we can clarify that. Well, well I think the well, uh, if I'm correct, I don't want to put words into Councillor Burns mouth, but I think the understanding was that you wanted to ring fence a grant so they could go ahead yes. with the hope that actually we wouldn't send them all the money in Correct. one go, mm -hmm. but Correct. we would have it if they needed it. Correct. Yeah, I'll call that now. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, can I have a proposal for that then, please? Sorry. Oh, sorry, Councillor Mason. Just, just one of a, a clarification, and I'm struggling to find it in the minutes. Uh, there was a, some discussion about an audio system and where, where and the funding for the audio system and some questions as to whether... Yes, I think that was something else as to why we were going to yeah. do it in part payments, I think, was because, yeah. um, you know, we could have provided that for them if we decided to to purchase that yeah, for it them. Was, it, was, it was, sorry to interrupt, it was, mm. it was, could they use, like, for example, my single battery-operated PA uh, if that's all they want to do, if they just want to say we're going to be singing this and, you know, obviously it's not to, um, you know, or, you know, something like this, we don't, you know, we don't want that, which might be used once a year or, or whatever it is. So they've got to come back. We're basically saying this is the maximum you need, but if you can actually do it cheaper, this is what I said about like the PA, is if you only want the battery, you know, bottom mind, mm -hmm. that's what you want. Okay, is that okay, everybody? Yep. Okay then, so can I propose for that then? Councillor Lucarini and seconder, Councillor Burns. And all those in favour? Okay, so that's approved, thank you. So uh, item 10D, Volunteer Centre Working Party. To move the adoption of the minutes of the Volunteer Centre Working Party meeting and the recommendations contained therein, held on 6th of September 2021. Hopefully you've all seen the papers relating to that. May I have, uh, are there any questions first? No? Okay, so may I have a proposal, Councillor Hanlon, seconded Councillor Burns, and all those in favour? Thank you. <coughs> so, uh, item 11, financial matters. To authorise the following payment list, Totaling £125,362.30. <coughs> May I have a proposal? Councillor McManus, seconder Councillor Roach. All those in favour? Okay, that's unanimous, thank you. Uh, 11B, the Women's Tour Cycle Event 2021. To consider a financial contribution to West Suffolk of 5000 towards the staging of the event in Haverhill. Yep, yeah. so we're going straight forward to a proposal and no no discussion or does anyone want to ask a question? I'm a bit confused. Mm -hmm. What are we 
contributing to West Suffolk? What, why are they not paying for it? I'm, I'm, well, you know, it's okay. a commercial organisation who's running this event, who are making a lot of money out of it as well. Uh, West Suffolk have uh, allocated £25,000, right. uh, which is basically um, to pay for, uh, or to go towards the share, their, the, the share of costs for Haverhill being the start um, mm -hmm. uh, location. Um, so that's an arrangement between West Suffolk and the County Council, and obviously then the County Council deals directly with Sweet Spot to organise the national tour um, and uh, West Suffolk have asked uh, the Town Council to consider putting £5,000 in so that um, their share goes down from 25000 to 20000 and we put 5000 in. Have they asked all the other parishes along the route? Um, well, Suffolk? I have to want to say I, I, I'm not surprised they didn't discuss their financial arrangements with other parishes with me, so I couldn't answer that question. Um, but um, obviously Haverhill is is the start location of the final leg, so I imagine uh, here and Felixstowe will be the two main areas. I do know that Felixstowe's put money in. Okay, Councillor Lucrini. Are we providing any entertainment or other activities on the day? Yes. And what cost is that? Um, I couldn't tell you the cost offhand, um, but I know that uh, Nick uh, had a budget because we had it in the main budget anyway, and he's not. He told me he's not spending all of it because some of the things that we plan to do um, are not possible because of COVID. As you know, it's quite a stripped down affair. Okay. Any more questions on that? Okay. So, are you still happy to propose, Councillor Marks? Yeah. Um, a seconder for that, Councillor McManus, and all those in favour? Six, six in favour. Any um, against? Oh, I thought we were Sorry. <laughs> uh, one, yeah. And any abstaining? One. Okay, so that's carried. Thank you. Okay then, so next item on the agenda, that's for 12, uh, five, item 12, consultation 12A to note the outcome of the LGBCE review of Suffolk County Council electoral arrangements. Okay, so do you want to speak on that? Um, well, you all know that the, um, uh, the Boundary Commission um, uh, decided to go with basically what Haverhill Town Council had suggested. Um, they, despite everything they said after the district reorganisation, um, they said it's not their job to decide on parish council um, uh, ward arrangements, despite the fact that, that they were the ones that created the current parish council ward arrangement. So I'm not entirely sure why it's their job to mess up, mess it up, and then not their job to put it back together again. So we have quite a serious degree of um, differences in representation in terms of the number of uh, electorate that each parish councillor now represents, but that is outside the scope of um, the Boundary Commission because there's no requirement that there is the, the, an attempt to make the equality that, of course, their work for district and their work for county was all about. So you may recall that when the district council review took place, um, they shifted the boundaries of the uh, district wards away from being coterminous with the county divisions and therefore created um, gaps which had to become parish wards. So we have uh, the Manor Road Ward, which is a very small area, uh, has a councillor all to itself. And we have the Parish Council's um, Central Ward, which is not the same thing as the District Council's Central Ward, but has the same name. So we had asked that the Boundary Commission did what they said they would do, um, which is address it when they... Um, rearranged the um, 
county divisional boundaries, but they've said they won't do it. So there's now the only, I mean, at the end of the day, it makes no difference to the number of councillors or indeed who the councillors are, depending on what the electorate decide to do. Uh, and it's how much it matters, given that the only way we can neaten this up, if we want to neaten it up, is to request that West Suffolk carry out a governance review of Haverhill Parish. Uh, and it's given it's only a few years back since they last did that, it's whether that's a, 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 a good thing to do on, with the resources available, whether we just lump it or whether we say we want, we want it tidied up. Okay, any comments on that? Councillor Burns. Well, the LGBCE, and they, I, mean, I think they want disbanded personally. And they seem to forget, I actually videoed their meeting where they said exactly what Colin mentioned about the parish councils, and they denied it like mad. And I made a formal complaint to them, to their boss, uh, who totally ignored it. I had to do a freedom of information request for data, which they tried to get wriggle out of a lot, and eventually I got the data, they accused my figures, uh, and the district council's figures of being 40% inaccurate mm. until they send me the freedom of information data when I proved it was actually them who were wrong. Mm. Um, the CGR review we had about, um, I'm going to say about five years ago, wasn't it, Colin? Um, unfortunately, at that point where we were trying to take over what is now the Arboretum and that area, uh, it was the last agenda item and certain other councillors um, wanted to go home and just said, I'll oh, let Witherspill keep it. So I think it's very apt that we do that, not just for the Manor Road Central, there, but also that area. Um, and I know for a fact there are other parishes also not happy about the way they've done, so it would be probably quite good to actually request it. And of course, I know, although it's nothing to do with the CGR, um, we have got the parliamentary um, side of things being done at the moment. Uh, I know there's been the first consultation, but we still have this ridiculous situation along the bypass, you know, where we know Kalina's in Suffolk, but the travel lodge of, um, uh, and all that's in Essex uh, causes umpteen confusion for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to pressure both those organisations to come up with the proper goods. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Councillor Smith. I just think it's uh, ironic that they're hell-bent on uh, rearranging the uh, constituencies to even out numbers, yet they they allow these tiny parish walls to, to happen. I mean, the cost is, there is a cost element, isn't it, I believe, Colin, with the elections. The more walls you got, the more cost there is. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So how can we... Um for a governance review, if you like. Or well, we write to the district council requesting a governance review and set okay. out the reasons for it. So, is that a proposal by, by Councillor Burns? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we've got a seconder, Councillor Smith. Um, all those in favour? Yeah, it's unanimous, so we could do that. Right. Thank you. Okay, to, so 12B to consider response to the West Suffolk Local Plan Services and Facilities Matrix. Hopefully you've had a look at whether or not we agree with Chair. Um, Roche. I'll, I'll abstain from this debate because I'm chairing and it's and my portfolio, so it's probably better if I don't get involved in this debate here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so that's with the interest. Councillor Burns. I'm on the same working path here as uh, Councillor Smith and, and obviously okay. Councillor Roche here. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying because I obviously am, um, often have a lot to say. Don't laugh. Um, for our town, um, I, in the very, very early days of this, I made a lot of strong criticism of the matrix because it's too, to me, it's too bland. Um, you know, they classify us as green. But another one has also got the yeses and noes, the same yeses and noes. They're all either classified as amber. You know, we don't have a decent transport policy. We mentioned about health um, uh, being very poor. You know, I find it quite strange that to have a public house is very important compared to something, um, 
you know, it doesn't really mention that uh, decent health facilities. So I don't know what, the, you know, I'm not going to ask the town council to do anything because I'm obviously on that same working party, but mm -hmm. um, I do find it a bit odd that we, you know, uh, towns, um, you know, we know Brandon's got a big problem with lack of housing, um, uh, in, uh, even on the current uh, 2031 uh, side of things, where they're desperate for it. Um, but I don't know how we how we resolve this, um, because one of the things I mentioned in my first ever submission to the local plan was about the word sustainable, mm. which is defined in the NPPF, but we seem to ignore it when it actually comes to developments. Um, that may change on the new local plan, who knows, I don't mm. know. But um, so I leave it up to you um, to decide what you want to do. So I would now look at the comments form. It's sort of the questions it's asking, it's not about the matrix itself, about whether or not you think it's factually incorrect or what the amendment should, should be. So when I looked through the Haverhill one, I couldn't disagree with the answers yes or no. As you said, public house, yes, we've probably got several. Um, but I take your point that, you know, the, um, the matrix itself is, is rather question questionable. Yeah. So, I mean, whether we can put some of that feedback in this um, form. Do you have any other comments on the matrix you would like to make? So we could put that under there, couldn't we? But, um, points that Councillor Burns made. Um, but it's not really, doesn't tell you much about a town. About the town and its sustainability, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, could, could I Councillor Roach? Few, just to, it might help. Yeah. Um, part of the idea of Matrix is specifically really aimed, like those small parishes, including towns that are parishes, it's yeah. really aimed at those smaller parishes as well where they're checking that the data is correct. So we found that some of the parishes have commented that they that the matrix is wrong. They've got this or they haven't got that, and it changes where they sit in the hierarchy. So, so we have changed some settlements from from some from some of the criteria. So I think that's more what it's about. So it's probably not quite the same for it's, well, it's not the same for town as it is for the other parishes. So it's it's just trying to get that feel from the especially the smaller ones, where we think we know what they've got as services, um, and then they come back and say, no, we haven't got public and all that closed, and, and it's mm -hmm. trying to tidy up all that data. Okay. Uh, Councillor Marks. Yeah, it's only just under the community-run shop and post office. It says no. Well, we've got the one up at, um, near the pizza place. Domino. Um, that's not, not community run by the community no, themselves. I see. Yeah. Oh, not no, that. I read that as being for the community. Yeah. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, that's an interesting use of the word, isn't it? Yeah, we do have permanent post offices in, in town. We've got the two. Yeah, permanent we have the permanent post offices, but I yeah. thought we also have that, that you know, post office. How would you know? There, there are post office countries which are actually. Um, Man by the community themselves oh, for a yeah. couple of days a week or a couple yeah, of hours a week, even pubs or in village halls. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Like pubs that yeah. have got okay, okay, so is there any other comments then we want to put on this feedback form or comments form? No? Okay. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Okay then, so the next item, 13, um, window displays in High Street. So um, if I hand that over to Councillor Marks. Councillor Marks, yep. Oh, Thank yeah, you. I, just that um, I don't even know where we were now. Oh, yes, I do know where we were. We were approached by somebody who said they thought it would be really useful. Well, the comment they made was, we are talking about the fact we do walk the town. Most of us walk the town and, and look to see what's wrong. This person said, how would I know you were a councillor to approach you? I thought it was probably quite a good, interesting comment. And they said, why don't you use one display in one of the windows with pictures of the town councillors on it? And I asked Colin, and um, that's why it's been raised tonight. Okay. Um, any comments on that, anybody? Councillor Lucarini. Probably one concern is that, that they're, they're likely to be vandalised. So whether we want our pictures to be vandalised and we're actually putting them somewhere 
maybe like inside the art centre would be a lot better than on the shop window. But then you limit the amount of people see them. The whole idea is to the whole idea is for the public at large, not just the people who go into the art centre. You know, it, I think it'd be really useful if we were more visible and transparent. I, I agree. I just think we've got to, we've got to realise that we are opening ourselves up to to problems with it. Okay, Councillor Smith. I think an idea of a window to display dedicated to the town council and what the town council does is, is a very good idea. But um, the, the benefit of having that uh, actually having our ugly mugs there, uh, I think, is um, debatable. Um, if they want to see our pictures, there is the website. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with the same sort of thoughts as that actually about the art centre, perhaps as Councillor Lucarini said. Um, there is, you know, they can come to there and get the information if that's what they want. I think to have our faces displayed to all, all and sundry, if you like, um, I don't want to say it like that, but it's, um, you know, some people will use it as an opportunity to deface it, perhaps. Um, Councillor Burns? I was going to support what Councillor Lucarini said, that we get enough of use as it is walking up and down the high street from, you know, uh, both, um, not physical, obviously, but verbal in the high street and online numerous comments and um, graffiti around town and all this sort of stuff. We do have a website with all our details on it if people want to find out who their councillor is. Um, we have a very nice digital display outside the art centre if we wanted to do that. The trouble with the uh, shop windows of course is the artwork is on the outside which does mean it's going to get uh, vandalised. If it was on the inside that would be slightly different other than the window getting broken of course. Okay, um, I'm sorry. That's amazing. Uh, slightly tangentially, uh, we've got these what's on in Haleyville message boards, which I think are massively underutilised and we can do an awful lot more with. Uh, and uh, there, maybe a halfway house is, you know, is there something in, uh, in the town that concerns you? Okay, uh, with a list of names and the wards mm -hmm. uh, which we represent. You know, contact your local councillor. Uh, you know, but those what's on in Haverhill boards, they're not really being made good use of. And I, I just wonder whether a halfway house might be to utilise those in some way for, to encourage people. Because not everybody is on the internet or uses That's the internet. Right. Yeah. That's, it's just the vast majority are. Okay, so Councillor Lucrini? Yeah, I think mean, that's got a really good point there. There is a notice board in every ward, I think. So actually, the information could be slightly more localised. So contact details for your actually your ward councillors. Yes. Councillor Penland? Yeah, can I put a caveat on that? Um, councillors should be asked if they want their full address and things like that on there. Okay. Um, because I wouldn't want mine on there because I was, uh, I'll say, I, at the last election I got done. So it'd have to be sort of just an email or whatever you, in my part. I don't know about the other councillors, but I've got to be asking that. And I, I think it's a good idea in every ball. Okay. So, um, so who wants to make a proposal then to um, either put photos up with some town council information, um, or there's another proposal was Councillor Hanlon's just or Councillor Mason, and then. Councilor Hanlon said about uh, about something on the uh, ward town council information. No, it's called. No, it's called. That's it. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I would much rather that they were in those notice boards. You know, a piece mm. of paper with contact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Email address. You don't need phone numbers or anything like that. Yeah. Um, rather than a photo. Oh, I think photo. I think. I, I, I'm quite happy to be, you know, I'm quite happy to be visible in the town and I'm quite happy to be from mm -hmm. who I am. Okay. If, they want, if they want to approach me, that's fine. And I get that if I'm just walking around, when I'm walking around with Hayfield, they often come up and say, who are you and what are you doing? Because it does look a bit odd when you're walking down the streets and you're looking at things and hearing other people's fences. And we don't really, apart from, we don't even have a town council badge. So, so we don't really have anything to identify ourselves when we're walking about. I get that. Mm -hmm. That's the way to make a point. Yeah, I mean, using the shop displays is is probably one of those things you've got to be careful with anyway, because where companies that own those buildings are quite happy perhaps to have artwork, they might not like to have 
things that are deemed as political. So I think we have to be careful with the, the owners of buildings. Okay. Um, Pastor Mason. Uh, just a, an add on to uh, uh, the tax. I did bring it up at a previous meeting actually about how, as West Suffolk councillors, we have our uh, badges and uh, Suffolk County councillors. And uh, I was told uh, last time I was in the Arts Centre to pop into the office because the tag had been made up for me. So when I'm in capacity as a town councillor, uh, you know, we can have those lanyards made for us. And I, I'd encourage uh, all town councillors, if they felt that, that that would help be an identifier for them, um, for the public, uh, to, to, to get a tag. Okay. So, um, so if we have a, perhaps a proposal then to put the information in the notice boards in the walls, so you're happy with names and email addresses, was that, Councillor Green? Yeah, it also may be to that the correspondence can be posted to the art centre. Yeah. Mm. So a proposal to do that in the one instance, and then we'll talk about perhaps the identification after that. So, Councillor Green, will you propose that then? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And um, a seconder, Councillor Hanlon. And if one in favour of that, yeah, that's unanimous. And then perhaps we can talk about um, some sort of ID card um, or badge. I have seen at other councils where they've had name badges. We used to have them. Yeah, I've, I've, I've still, still got mine. Yeah. If councillors councillors requested them, they give them them. But okay. not all councillors want them. They're okay. expensive, so yeah. but you can have them. Oh, of course, yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so if anyone wants to request a a name badge, then do so through yourself then, Colin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Is that the one for the lanyard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lanyard one, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks exactly like your West Suffolk one. It's just, it's yeah. just when you're walking about, it gives you a little bit more credibility. Okay, no, that's fine. That's, um, I think when I've got my mayor's chain on, people know I'm the mayor. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best lanyard. <laughs> but, I can't, big necklace. but I can't do that every Saturday and Sunday walking down the high street. So Anyway, okay, thank you. Um, that's great. So, item uh, 14, actions taken under delegated powers. Any? None to report. Okay, item 15, to receive any urgent correspondence. None? No. Uh, therefore, we come to 16 dates of next meeting. So, the next meeting is Tuesday, the 26th of October 2021, at the Haver Hill Arts Centre, or is that possibly? Yes. Yeah, it will be. Okay. It's lovely. Okay, so. There's going to be a um, session on. Yep. Uh, can I ask if councillors can just remain, town councillors can remain for a few moments afterwards, um, just for a, 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 a. It's not a, a private session, closed session, or anything like that. It's just uh, something to just advise you so you have a heads up on them. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to close the meeting now then at 2057.